Hello and welcome back to another Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Results Review Show. As you can hear, uh, this week BQ is not on the show. Uh, it's being hosted by myself, Adam, and I'm joined by the mighty Ro. Good afternoon, Ro. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, as you might gather, uh, we haven't got BQ with us today. Uh, he's otherwise tied up. But what we didn't want to do was uh, miss out on what was a pretty good show. But before we get into that, uh, as always, we want to uh, give out our regular shout outs. So, um, one of the uh, other podcasts out there, which is fairly good, and if you haven't listened to it before, certainly go and check it out on whatever device that uh, you listen to this on called The Heelcast. Uh, those guys do a really good job over there. So make sure uh, you do that. And uh, we've also got, obviously, Andre Corbeil. You know more about him, Ro. Do you want to tell us a bit about him? Real um, good with BQ. And as far as uh, he's real knowledgeable about the Impact um, product as a whole, you know, a lot of uh, the backstage stuff going on. So um, I uh, recommend Impact fans to give him a follow. I believe it's uh, at Andre Corbeil. And whilst we're telling people to follow, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether it's on uh, your podcast app or on YouTube, or even if you're listening to this from a, a link on our Facebook page uh, at the Impact Wrestling Fan Zone. Make sure you like us, subscribe, whatever it may be. And uh, if you can leave us a, a review, do so as well. If it's on YouTube, do so in the comments below. And I'm sure as we go along tonight, we're going to have quite a few things that we talk about that we'd love to hear your thoughts on. So um, we're going to try and knock this out fairly quickly tonight, as it's our first show without BQ. Uh, we're going to try and do this in, in one take as well. There's, there's, a, there's pressure on you, bro. There you go. <laughs> uh, so what do you think of the show? You know what? I found overall it was it was OK. It seemed more as a show to build up to the next show. I'm really looking forward to next week's. And that's not to put down um, this past episode of Impact, uh, January 11th. But I just felt like it was OK. But it was uh, building towards uh, next week's episode. Yeah, I, just on that note, I mean, we don't talk about spoilers and those things. So if you are listening to us for the first time. Do bear in mind that we are not um, uh, going to be talking about the spoilers uh, from the tapings, but uh, obviously they have advertised the barbed wire massacre match. And there was some bit of news this week saying um, that it's not going to be shown on pop TV. Now, for our regular listeners, uh, they'll most probably know by looking at our Facebook page that it is going to be shown live on Twitch. But I have asked my contact at Impact UK just to clarify the situation for us. And if you keep tuned to the channel, we will get you an update on that. As of the status of the UK recording, once again, I'm trying to get clarity on that, whether Spike UK will be showing it. But one way or the other, you will be able to see it, whether it's on Twitch, on uh, the, the, the Impact site or, or some form. But we'll keep you up to date on that one. So, yeah, the show itself, I'm pretty much the same as you, Ro. I thought it was an overall very good show, uh, but it was building to bigger and better things. So why don't we break it down anyway and look at uh, the show as it took part? So obviously we started off with uh, Dan Lambert and Lashley coming down. Did you think that Dan Lambert was as good as he usually is with this this segment? You know, it's never I never had a problem as far as, you know, his segments. I just feel like where's the progression? Like I think we see now, you know, with him, you know, he claiming to end uh the career of uh James Storm. Like what's next? Like I feel like this group since they've come, you know, they've been so dominant, we haven't seen that one baby face really get their comeuppance on them. And, you know, who's really gotten the rub? You know, you would like to believe it would have been Lashley. But now Lambert's, you know, the prominently featured face in this. I mean, not face by, you know, status, but, you know, he's the one getting the shine. But um, the one thing I did like was the addition to KM to American Top Team. I think KM's talented. And I think if they give him an opportunity, you know, we can see what he can do. He can end up being a big player down the road so that was you know the one thing i did like um as far as where they're going i thought if they wanted to i don't think they'd really uh, follow it through but if they really wanted to you could really play off the you know you screwed storm with cam if you really wanted to get behind him but um outside of that yeah that, that was just my big thing yeah, I mean, I agree with you to some extent, because obviously they came into this to say about, you know, how they hate pro wrestling, but they're sticking around, even though they keep beating all the wrestlers, they're still sticking right. around. <laughs> so, so I don't understand what their motive is at this point. Having said that, uh, the one thing I would say about 
about the, the segment is that obviously they're building KM and we've talked about it on the show before that we think that uh, I personally think that KM's got a lot of, of value a lot I keep saying the word equity in him in that you know he is a good asset and it's someone they can build around and it now starts to look like that this storyline it is going to be the start of of the Lashley turn back to face or, or moving away from America's top team. They've hinted it a few times, but it looks like this could be the beginning of his end with his association with it. Because they, they sowed some seeds there that he, he's not liking the way that Lambert uh, is really talking up KM. So, yeah, looking forward to see where this goes. So after that, uh, after that opening segment, obviously we had Moose and Eddie Edwards come out to uh, tackle them. And uh, obviously they pulled Dan Lambert away at the last second, which set up the match for later on the evening. Any thoughts on, on this kind of confrontation that, that's taking place and, and the reintroduction of Eddie Edwards? Um, I'm fine with as far as with Eddie Edwards' involvement. You know, I guess he's helping out Moose. But like once again, we never really got that big payoff or the big win for Moose versus Lashley. Like these guys, it, it seems like they've been facing forever. And every time they face one another, Lashley's always um, having his arms arm raised, raised in the end. So that that's just my thing. Just where you're going to go with it, where's the big payoff? Who's benefiting from, from this the most? If it's going to be KM, hey, I'm cool with that. You know, I think it would have been cool if it would have been Moose, but... That, that was just my thing. But, I mean, it was all right. It was okay. I, I pretty much agree. It, you know, it seems like we're retreading old ground, and it was filler, like you said at the beginning there, to, to build for something for next week. So, all right. Well, after that, we got EC3 coming out, doing his uh, open challenge and, and taunting the crowd. So pretty much two talk segments back to back uh, from what I can see here. Uh, what did you think of this segment? You know, it's crazy. Like, they finally seem to find – how to use EC3 and and what I'm saying by this is you know once they put the grand championship on him you know he was being stuck in the whole tag matches with AAA and whatnot and this is how I felt they could have used him once they put the belt on him he's a big enough name where he can enter a program you know with some mid-card guys and not only help elevate the championship but as well as the people that he's working with so I, I like this feud that he has with Matt Seidel um you know with playing off the whole you know he's a choker uh and I'm looking forward to you know them having another match I thought it was an excellent promo by EC3 uh and it's it's good to see him get a little bit of his mojo back and, and the kind of things that people like about him um but you know once again I, I don't understand why Matt Sedell is getting another shot. He's already had two shots at it, but obviously they're building to a third shot for him. So it's a bit frustrating that they're carrying on with this feud. Uh, but but there you go. That's what they seem to be doing. The one thing I'll, I'll say as well about Matt Sedell, he, he he bothers me for some reason. He's no doubt a talented wrestler, but he just looks odd. He looks like one of these you know, fifty mid fifties guys in California who's still trying to cling on to his youth and the way that he <laughs> dresses and looks. And for some reason, it just bothers me. I don't know why, but anyway, uh, talented guy. And you know, I, I'm not buying into his promos, but the thing is, the guy can go. Whether it's in the X division, whether it's in the Global Championship, so yeah, looking forward to seeing where it goes. So the match itself, though, um, he op he challenges, well, he open challenge, and PT Williams comes out. What do you make of the match? You know, I, I had mentioned a couple podcasts ago, I've always thought with Eli Drake and as well as EC3, these guys, there's some kind of chemistry they have when they work with um, X Division wrestlers. And I've seen the same thing here, like, because I had always seen Petey Williams, you know, he's he just seems such like a small guy. But, you know, even in this match, he was holding his own. And, you know, I hope. They have something for Petey Williams more down the road, you know, move him up the card a bit. But as far as the match, um, it was fine. I, I kind of felt it was kind of stalling a little bit for the uh, Matt Seidel so inter interference. But um, outside of that, it, it was fine. And I, I liked it. I wouldn't mind, you know, them working together again down the road in EC3 and uh, Petey Williams. Yeah, I, I thought I thought Petey was fine in the match. But it's, it's always a shame when you've got someone – who could be holding that title or even, you know, the X division title. And as you say, it just seemed like he was, he was buying time. It was a filler match just so that you got the, the Matt Seidel running. 
Um, you also mentioned Eli Drake there. And one thing that, uh, that really struck me this week is every time EC3 was selling his name, you know, EC3, it reminded me of E. Like Drake, uh, and it was just something that was really noticeable. And both guys, to, you know, two of my favourites for that very reason that they're great on the mic and uh, they have a great character. Anyway, so yeah, Seidel runs in, um, calls for the bell, and it and it's setting up next week. You know, hey, just a side side a note. I just gotta. I'm wondering with EC3, they only call him EC3 now, right? They don't address him as Ethan Carter the Third, or do they still address him as Ethan Carter the Third? I'm trying to think. Um, it's been a while since I, I think they do actually. Do they or not? I have to look at the Titan Tron. I have to go back to that. Oh because, yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. In the in, in the Titan Tron, they do. I was just thinking. It seemed because remember when um you know Dixie was still around, you know they made it a point that point of emphasis to so, to show the relation that that's his aunt. But you know once she uh, left the company, you know I know that I was like I don't ever hear them say Ethan Carter the third. They just say EC three. Yeah, and it, I don't know. It was just a side thing. I was just wondering. Well, what will be really interesting is if he does leave the company, bearing in mind there's no uh, copyright on, on gimmicks now, you know, that you can take his character with him. Will they really have Ethan Carter the third, who is obviously synonymous with TNA right. in WWE? It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that one. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, listeners, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Right, so we moved on to uh, the the backstage segment with Mackenzie Mitchell and Ali. Um, uh, I'll start on this one if you don't mind, because uh, I it's funny. Obviously, they're trying to turn Ali much more, I suppose, a vicious, you know, a new side to a character. It's something which I, I've been uh, asking for for the last few weeks, months, you know. But the thing that really bothers me is that she still plays this character of almost like a, a dullard, and, and it's really hammy acting which is beginning to bother me now. Every time I see Ali, all I think is that she's a terrible actress and she's, it's almost like a pantomime part, you know, that it's so OTT, the acting, you know, where she's ruffling her, her face up and, you know, and trying to think of, oh, I, I'm not the, you know, the newbie around here now, I'm the new Ali. And, and it just seems really disingenuous to me. What, what did you make of it? Um, I, I look at it as more so as she her character's progressing i mean i know that's kind of been she's been one of the people there's been so much stop and go with her character pro progression but i think we're seeing now that transition because you know with this promo i just seen she was real fierce like one that you would uh, expect from your top baby face so yeah i i didn't have no problems with it i, I see what you're talking about as far as with the acting wise but i see them moving away from the you know, hi, Ali. You know the bubbly personality and more fierce. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and I think that is coming. And it was needed, but it, it's just more. From, the problem I have is more the acting of it. Right. <laughs> and you know, I I, I like her. I, I think she's great. And you know, when we met her at uh, the Slammiversary table, she was she was an absolute gem. She really was. She was she was great with my daughter. She's one of my daughter's favorite characters in there. So yeah, but it's just I, I wish she would tone it down a little bit, you know, the OTT acting of it. But anyway, that's just a, a personal preference. Right. So, so moving on, um, we, well, she obviously cut the promo on uh, Laurel Van Ness. And uh, obviously that plays out later in the show, which we're going to come on to. So next we saw a bit of backstage stuff with, with Eli and Chris uh, entering the building and then some random segment of Alberto kicking some bins around, which, um, I didn't quite get myself other than just to show that he's he's a bit angry. Um, anything to add on this one before we talk about the Matt Seidel promo, which we have touched on already, but uh, anything to add on Eli Drake, Chris Adonis, or Alberto at this point? Um, yeah, I found the the Alberto one pretty random. Um, I feel like we've seen that uh, previously when he was shooting with Johnny Impact. It just kind of seemed out of place for me a, a tad bit. You know, it, it came across more of, you know, we need to show that Alberto's here. He's on the show this week, so. Yeah, absolutely. So then we moved on to the Matt Seidel where he challenged EC3 again to a 60-minute time limit match. Now, has this been confirmed as an actual match that's taking place? Do we know this this takes place next week? Uh, I believe I it's been confirmed. I don't know as far as the 60-minute, but I will say it seems, in, and this is just one could assume, it seems that they're they're transitioning the grand title into just a regular mid card title because you notice this is the second time in his uh, 
promo where Matt Seidel stressed, you know, no rules, fire the judges, you know, let's just mm. have us a match. And that that's good because I think, you know, while the concept on paper was good, I think you need certain wrestlers that can work that style. And, you know, we've seen, we've had a, a, enough to see that, you know, it works for some wrestlers, it doesn't work for others. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, funny enough, it was the first time I've heard EC3 actually mention the round thing as well. Because uh, I think when he described himself, the pound for pound, the round for round best wrestler in the world. So, yeah, um, I think they are going to be transitioning away from it. And um, we've talked about this numerous times on on previous shows. And I, I personally like the concept and I think that it brings something different. But, you know, new management, dare I say, and yet another reboot, if they've got views on it, then obviously we'll, we'll see what happens at, the, at these tapings. Right. Right. So um, we then had a flashback, which I don't think aired in the UK. So I can't even give you um really a comment on this because I'm, I'm fairly certain in the uk taping that they didn't show this but we had kurt angle versus james storm what, what did they show the whole match here yeah it, i mean the match was short i mean i i remember it kind of brought me back to you know when it initially aired and i'm not gonna lie to you man it made me miss the <laughs> you know what the company used to be you know i'm able to adapt to what it is now and appreciate for what it is now but that uh that match and you know james storm capturing the tna world title at that time man just the crowd and just the feeling i remember as a fan walking away from seeing that match just like whoa you know like it, it was that feel good moment and it's unfortunate because a lot of us that you know follow james storm up until his departure you know we were hoping that he got that last run because unfortunately his first run with the title is relatively short but uh yeah it was they, 24 hours wasn't it it was 24 hours from memory is that right uh bobby root take it off in the next night but after that match yeah well, i think it ended up airing the next episode or it might have been two two impact episodes after that i don't know but it, it was relatively short and he never got the title back again but um yeah, it, it 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 was just it was a relatively short match to begin with, but man, just that feel good. I, I recommend any uh, fan of Storms as well as uh, Impact to go watch that match on the GWN app, and I mean just that feeling, man. And we're hoping as fans that it can the company now can one day get back to that, you know, stage. Here's here's a question for you, because obviously these flashbacks have shown some fantastic matches over the last few weeks. And, you know, obviously Kurt Angle, James Storm, no longer with us, Bobby Roode, Samoa Joe, all these kind of matches have been showing. If you could bring one of these guys back who who were in their prime or or certainly when they were in their prime in TNA at the time, who who would you go for? Talking about in the current state of uh, impact right now? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, you know what? I would probably say Kurt Angle only because the one thing that I liked with Kurt Angle when he came on board, he was able to work with pretty much anyone and make anybody look well. I mean, whether it was heavyweights, whether it was X Division guys, um, he he was a jack of all trades, so to speak. So I would say a prime Kurt Angle. I mean, he, he's my favorite wrestler of all time. Uh, that's not me just saying that. Um, and I love the way he was introduced with the, uh, you know, you didn't know who it was with the, the silhouettes of, of the wrestlers coming. So I, I thought it was a fantastic debut, but I would actually most probably go for Joe. I, I think Joe's someone that they could use on the ro roster right now. But anyway, moving on. Uh, oh, by the way, listeners, let us know in the comments below. Who would you like to see back out of uh, all these ones that we're getting on the flashbacks? Right. OK, so we're on to the Laurel versus Casey Spinelli match. Big fan of this myself. I thought it was a, a really good match. What what were your thoughts on it before I, I go back over it? Yes, very basic uh, knockouts match. Um, I don't know if the title was on the line for this. That was my one thing. I was like, you know, what did Spinelli do to get a title shot? But nevertheless, um, I think, you know, down the road, we need to be looking out for Spinelli, you know, moving up the ranks, potentially challenging for the knockouts title. But uh, Laurel Van Ness wins the match. Um, fine. Right. Well, uh, it wasn't a title match. They, I think they did say on commentary from memory that uh, it was a non-title. But what better way to, to get a title shot than to beat the champion? So, yeah, they did say it was non-title. But uh, no, I, I quite enjoyed it. And it was just a shame that the crowd was a bit dead for this one. Um, in that, you know, a few times when Laurel was screaming 
you know, about don't touch my coat and things like that. Uh, you know, you could hear crickets in the crowd, which is a bit of a shame. But I thought Laurel um, looked very, very good again. It's a real shame that she is is departing. Um, what was interesting about this, um, and, and moving away from the match, because obviously she won it and she, I think she won it clean as well. But Ali got booed on the run in. I don't know if you noticed this. I don't know if you picked that up. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch that. Yeah, that she, you know, you'd think that the baby face, as she's been playing, running in would um, would would get cheers for attacking Laura Van Ness, but there was significant boos around the the auditorium, and I don't know if it's because Laura Van Ness is Canadian. I thought Ali was as well, mind you, but um, yeah, it just seemed it seemed strange that the baby face was getting booed for for attacking a, a in a running. Yeah, they they were chanting for LVN during the match when she was facing Casey Spinelli and. I was because I any anytime when I see people face, I'm always wondering, okay, well, who's the face, who's the heel? But it seems like with the impact, they do a good job, kind of. You know, you, you really don't. They really don't play the heel face up that much. I mean, for certain wrestlers, of course. But yeah, they were they were cheering for LVN, so I guess it does make sense to kind of boo Ali, you know, so so to speak. But yeah, I didn't catch I didn't catch it initially on the program. Yeah. Well, OK, well, moving on from that one, we then went to Eli Drake and Chris Adonis coming down to, to make a, a address, a championship address, um, as no one in the world would have been surprised to see. Uh, we had people come out. Um, I actually thought the promo was quite good by, uh, you know, both Adonis and Eli Drake. They were giving good promos. Uh, and it's a bit of a shame when you realize that Adonis, who isn't known for his promo skills, is actually better than uh, Johnny Impact. But I quite like this this promo and this uh, confrontation between the three of them. I thought it was quite good. Uh, any views on it yourself, bro? Yeah, Eli's part, man, it, it had me laughing, but it kind of gave me hope too that even though this his current title reign hasn't been spectacular, I think when he I do believe he will win the belt again sometime this year. I think his second reign is really going to be great. But my favorite part of the promo was when he said. When I say dummy, you say, yeah, dummy, yeah. And the fans, you know, are engaged. He says, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me, dummy, yeah. Like, that That was just hilarious. Like, you can tell from his promos, he there's so much passion in it. And I just, I wish, you know, and, and I hope the new creative team sees that with him, that he comes across as a real hard worker. And um, there's the that talent can be undenied. But, yeah, it was an excellent promo. I've got to say, I did hear that bit and it made me chuckle as well. It was really good. Yeah, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to me. <laughs> good stuff. Eli, Eli's fantastic on the mic. And it's just a shame that this championship run of his it hasn't been booked that strongly. Um, so it's a bit of a shame. But, you know, whatever happens, you know, I think he will be a main character going forward. The, the other bit of the promo I liked was, uh, I know Johnny Impact is not a great, you know, guy on the stick. And, and I thought Alberto, once again, did very well. But, I did like where you said, you know, it sounds like you're having a party. I'm a party kind of guy, you know, so I'll see you there. So interesting what they go with that one. But it looks like it's going to be another three-way match uh, for the title of down in Detroit. Yeah, they're okay. setting that up. They're setting that up, I want to say, for uh, next week's episode. But, you know, that that should be a good match. But after that, it's time for Eli to move on from the both of these two. <laughs> yeah, Assuming and, that uh, Eli wins. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the two, I see, I can still see a feud with Johnny Impact and, and Alberta because it doesn't feel like there's been a real payoff in that feud uh, for me anyway. And uh, so, yeah, it would be good to see those two break off and Eli go on to something else. All right. So then we got uh, some more Dan Lambert backstage, once again, praising KM, which was upsetting. Lashley, pretty standard stuff. Do you want to add anything or should we just move on? Uh, Yeah, I don't really have too much on it. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, it's once again just building that that kind of wedge. It looks like you know that's the the way that they're going with this storyline, and I think it's about time that they did something with this. And you know, it, it's good for KM. It's going to be good for Lashley because he's going to get some more t talk time. So yeah, it'll be good. Right next, Chandler Park and Joseph Park um, and Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, once again, hammy acting and. I don't mind it as much with these two because they've been like it from the very beginning. But I can imagine Chandler Park, if he carries on doing this OTT stuff, it's going to get old very quickly for me. Uh, but 
it's interesting that at least they're giving him something to do. And it's a criticism I've had for quite some time now that, you know, other than a couple of storylines, that they, they haven't really got any mid-card storylines going. So it was good to see that, you know, they're giving Congo Kong something to do. They're giving Chandler something to do. They're giving something to Joseph Park. Um, any thoughts on this at all? Just seems it came across more so as we're going to get a Congo Kong abyss feud. Um as far as that, I mean, you know, nothing, nothing major. I think with Chandler Park's character, I mean, we've seen this happen in all um, facets of wrestling where a, a guy or gal comes in, you know, they might have a cheesy gimmick and then they end up breaking away from that. And, you know, that's when they really kind of get that push. But Harmless, you know, I, I, I like the utilization of um, everyone involved. So no problem. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I like Jimmy Jacobs as well. I know we haven't seen much of him at the moment. Um, I know that he's helping out on creative. I don't know if he is in the new set of tapings, uh, but, you know, I do like him as an on-screen character. Uh, it would be good to see what he's got in the ring, because I know he's he's wrestled some indie shows, but it'll be interesting if to see if they if they actually do bring him into the impact ring at all. Um, but, yeah, it's good that they've got a talking guy for, for Congo Kong, a talking guy. Look at me, the professional there. I think <laughs> I think the words manager is what I was looking for. They're not talking guy. Right. OK. Um, now let's move on to what I think is is really the highlight of the night. You know, with regards to storyline progression, we've got the LAX lair and OVE crashing it. I thought this segment was excellent. And the reason I say excellent is. Um, I like the visual style of it. And I've been talking for quite some time that they, they need to start to give the show a bit more of a visual impact. Uh, and the, the the jerky camera work with the filter on, you know, where it's it's hazy footage, I actually quite like this tying in with OVE. And, and I think it worked very well, this segment. Um, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I liked it as well. Um, this feud, this is one of these feuds, man. I, I got to say, it was, it's funny how they fell into it. Cause, Cause, you think where it originally started, you know, where you had OVEs, the faces, and LAX. I mean, I know they never were classified as hills, but you know, hill tactics and whatnot. But to see what where they've been able to do with these groups, I mean, man, that next week that barbed wire match that they advertised. Um, unfortunately, I guess it's going to be on Twitch, like you stated earlier. But um, that's really going to be big time. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that did make me chuckle in this segment is that uh, when LAX came back to their uh, clubhouse and they said they've trashed our clubhouse, I've got to be honest, it looked like it was trashed before they started. It, 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 <laughs> right. it does look like that, that, you know, they've trashed it and then started, you know, every week, you know, so I, it didn't look that different at the end to, to, to when they started. But uh, yeah, it, it was it was a good segment. And uh I actually even really like the the way that you use um, Santana and Ortiz in this segment. You know, they're the ones pushing, this has got to end, this has got to end. We've got to do something about this. And uh, yeah, I, I've got to say, I can't remember a match and impact that I've been looking forward to as long as this one. Uh, I think this is going to be a fantastic end to a feud. I'm guessing it's an end to a feud, but uh, it's they've built it up fantastically well. And bringing in Sammy Callahan has really worked in this feud. And and it, it's amazing when you think back to where we were around the Slam anniversary tapings, where LAX were, were basically being fed to Alberto, to think that they then go on from there, um, you know, to, to, to something like this is, is great. And, you know, I know Alberto had his problems off screen and those kind of things, which has led to this happening. But what a stroke of fortune for LAX because they could have, really gone a di different direction if, if Alberto had still stayed in those next tapings. Yeah, I right. agree. <laughs> yeah, so moving on. Uh, next, we've got a X Division mix-up match, which we always complain about how they just throw these matches together for no real reason. Um, so we had Trevor Lee, well, the Cult of Lee with uh, Caleb and Hakim Zayn versus Sanjay Dutt, who we haven't seen in quite some time from memory. Desmond Xavier and Garza Jr., who once again we haven't seen. And I've got to say, I'm amazed they let him wrestle because he looked banged up uh, in, the, in this match. And he? He, he really did look like he was moving well. He looked like he could barely lift his arm. But what did you think of the match? Yeah, well, as far as uh, before I get into it, I think with Garza Jr. and uh, com compared to uh, 
I want to say, you know, around December or maybe towards the end of November, maybe maybe a Bound for Glory. I, I can't remember. He doesn't look as compromised as he did then versus now, as far as injury wise. I I was assuming that maybe they're gonna play up to that, and maybe he's just not as hurt as he's uh, portraying. You know, kind of trying to to get, uh, garnish that kind of sympathy. Um, but um, as far as the match, it seemed I couldn't really get into it. It seemed like it was just your typical thrown together X Division guys fighting for God knows what match. Um, it was all right. It, it seems you know to, to just showcase uh, Desmond Xavier since he'll be getting a title shot next week, uh, which I, I I have no problem with. But yeah, it was just I couldn't really get into it. I think you've hit the nail on the head. There is that the that that's what they're doing. Um, it was just purely to to highlight how good Desmond was. And to be fair, he was fantastic in the match. It's the best I've seen him look. Uh, I also think that they're building on this cult of Lee. I think I, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago on, on the last review that we did, that it seems like that uh, they're trying to turn these guys into a, a, a tag team uh, of some sort and, and move them away from the X Division. So I think this has helped with that a little bit as well. So I'm fine with the match. I thought it was a good match, but it was a bit of a spot fest, which sometimes he's thrown a match. You know, these, these matches that are thrown together are... So, um, which leads us on to the main event. And um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you start with this one, Ro. What, what are your thoughts on this? All right. Uh, before we get into the main event, I think they uh, advertised, uh, I guess, Congo Kong will be facing Chandler Park, as well as they were advertising the uh, LAX OVE barbed wire massacre. So, you know, just to note that. But as far as the KM Lashley versus Moose and Eddie Edwards, um, standard tag team match um i'll just say the biggest thing was km getting the win um i think that's his first win of an impact of somebody you know prominent you know eddie edwards former world champion former G ghc champion um but yeah outside of that that was just my big thing that you know km finally kind of got that big win yeah, I mean, first of all, the, the the bit that makes that made me laugh at the beginning of the match where they were talking about how beat up the manager is. I can't remember his name of ATT, and then he gets kicked in the face by <laughs> Eddie Edwards to start off the match. I thought that once again, uh, he is a fantastic comedy character who just seems to get beat up every week. Um, so that was good to see that. Yeah, with regards to the match, I, th I thought the match was very good. Um, KM himself, uh, he pulled off some really really strong moves and and some really acrobatic moves but the one thing that did come over was that he seemed to gas in the in the match he did seem like he was completely out of breath at one point during the match but um i don't know if, if that was something that you picked up on at all yeah no i didn't catch that part but there was one bit where i think it was just before moose did his uh you know running around the ring and the the high drop kick into the into the turnbuckle um he looked like he was actually knackered and couldn't get up <laughs> <laughs> i know that that's what he's supposed to look like but it, it looked genuine in this one but no it was it was good to see that they're building km that he was the one who picked up the win i know there was obviously some uh, shenanigans going on in the ring but uh yeah it, it's just building that discontent once again with with, uh, with lashley and i think all in all, they did a good job on this one. And uh, if it means that KM is now getting a program with something to do, because let's face it, he hasn't had anything to do as of up to yet, I think it's a good thing. And, and I really like the way this storyline is developing because it does look like it could be Lashley versus KM. It could be Lashley versus Moose. You know, we don't know. Um, and that's always good in wrestling when you don't know what's going to happen next because that's, that's what makes one you want to tune in. Exactly. Anyway. So um, that's pretty much it for the show. I know this has been a, a quicker rundown than usual, but um, have you any closing thoughts, Ro, on, on where we're going? Obviously, we saw a, a trailer for the Barbed Wire Massacre, which was interesting, bearing in mind they're not showing it. Uh, but any final thoughts? Yeah, um, like I said earlier, I kind of felt like this show was ma mainly, um, I don't want to say so much filler, but building towards the next show, which I believe is the last episode from the previous set of tapings so after next week's episode that's when we'll see the new regime um see what they can do but yeah um good solid show um looking forward to next week's show which i think is going to be awesome so um yeah that's pretty much all i got on my end
Brilliant. Well, uh, thanks to all the listeners who tuned in this week. As we said at the start of the show, uh, if you've got any comments for, for Roe and myself or BQ, make sure to drop them in the comments below, whether that's on the Facebook page or, or, or whatever device that you're listening to on the app page or whatever it may be. So make sure to do that. And don't forget to hit subscribe and like us. Um, with regards to things to look out for, uh, uh, BQ did a teleconference this week with Don Callis and Scott Damore which was uh, a really interesting listen, if you want to hear about some of the things going on backstage. This was done from the current tapings, you know, so uh, there was a lot of questions about what's going on. So do be aware there might be some spoilers on that one. But uh, other than that, thanks for listening and we will catch you next week. Uh, it's goodbye for me, Adam, and it's goodbye from... Ro the Great, I'm out. <laughs> Take care.